All right. Crazy. I want to take it back, though, because this is obviously an example of just the amount of time that Hacks has spent thinking about this game and thinking about playing this game and thinking about movement in this game. So I want the history lesson. I want to know where you believe the beginning of your esports career started. It would have to be net battle with uh, Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald. Woo Wait, wow. which one? Ruby or Sapphire? <laughs> I loved Kyogre, man. My man, my man. I'm so happy. I love Kyogre. I love Kyogre. <laughs> but from what I remember, Groudon was actually the most broken Pokemon uh, on a competitive level in that game. It's okay, whatever. What, what did you find the most interesting about that first competitive experience? And then mm. what, how did, if you could drill down to like what you found most invigorating and most exciting about that. I don't think I really thought so deeply into it back then. I also really liked uh, Maple Story. Oh, <laughs> like, I wasn't that hardcore. Yeah, I hated Maple Story. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I didn't start thinking about games this analytically until I became like a Fox player in Melee like four mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, that was when my whole mindset shifted. So wait, so you hit top six like not really thinking significantly about this okay. game? Wait a minute. No, okay, so... Definitely, I was analytical to a good degree, but things really took a turn when I started playing Fox uh, because Fox is so much better if you like lab his frame data. Mm -hmm. Like if you um, use like hacked versions of the game to like break it down into frame by frame and see what's actually going on like on a scientific level, mm -hmm. you can make the character so much better. And then he ends up having all this like stuff that has to be done frame perfectly, mm -hmm. uh, like tons of 1 60th of a second timings but if you can do all of it then he's like definitely the best character in the game but I kind of just wanted to um, influence like a new wave of Fox players who like thought about things this way because it was obvious to me that if you thought about things this way like this character got a lot out of it right um, and I think that's what ended up happening actually a lot of techniques with Fox like I think what you were saying earlier mm -hmm. how like in the past we would always tell ourselves certain things were impossible. Mm -hmm. A lot of those, like, 1 60th sec of a second timings kind of became the standard um, in these past few years. Now, we're, we're kind of at the point in 2018 where we know that, like, most of those things that we used to think were unreasonable are actually possible, but we also are able to tell when something actually is physically impossible. There <laughs> are things in the game that are, like, physically impossible. Um, like like the pivot up tilt move that mm -hmm. I was telling mm -hmm. you about before, uh, you really can't do that. It's it it actually just isn't possible to do. So it's like don't base your strategies around that. Like definitely to yeah. any sense. Yeah, like there will never be a day when that's yeah. a thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Jeez. So well. Well, yeah. I mean, going off of Pokemon, so you started off in net play for Ruby and Sapphire, and then if I'm not mistaken, the TCG afterwards. What was the order? No, I think. I was already playing the Pokemon card game. They mm -hmm. they coincided almost around the same time because it all happened. It all happened like when well the Pokemon Center opened in like late two thousand one, like mm -hmm. November, and then I know by two thousand three I was like avidly playing both the card game and the video game. I think that was around when I started to play both of them like quite a lot. Nice and uh, you know this uh, this just kind because of, I'm a Yu Gi Oh guy. Why Pokemon? Was there something specific that drew you to it at, at the beginning? I actually would end up playing Yu-Gi-Oh for about two years. Mm -hmm. the, the TCG or the video game? Oh, TCG. Okay, nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like about to say, like, game yeah. boy, hello. <laughs> but, but Pokemon just had so much more of an inviting community. Oh, like, yeah. Especially for someone who's like eight years old. Yeah. Like, Yu-Gi-Oh uh, gets kind of ratchet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very fast. Very ratchet, very fast. That's... <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, uh, Pokemon is a great thing for people of that age. Yeah, I think so. It's a lot more <laughs> colorful and happy and like yeah. it's, it's good. Welcome again warm. Yeah. <laughs> I could see why you would Interesting. understand that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, then when did you end up picking Melee? Picking up Melee? I've had Melee since the day it came out in 2001 but competitively it was 2005 either October or November. Pretty sure it was October that I went to my first tournament. Um, but I had been lurking okay, no. So technically, I went to a tournament at the Pokemon Center in like mid two thousand five. Jeez, and that's crazy. Yeah, when I told you October two thousand five, I meant more like 
like a Smash Boards affiliated tournament, right. like oh. affiliated with the Smash community. Okay. Because the Pokemon so Center tournament is just like a neighborhood community tournament. thing. Yeah. 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 Okay. And uh, so, how long, how long did it take you? Being in the scene before you started seeing results for your for your efforts. Uh, it took me about two years. I uh, so at the time, like the best players in New York were like uh, this guy Bum who played Donkey Kong. Oh, and Bum! You know, like s s the one who plays yeah, yeah Marvel yeah, yeah. and Smash. Ten years ago, he was a Donkey Kong player in, <laughs> in, in, in Melee. <laughs> he was amazing. He was I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you on Twitter right now. That's crazy. That's too funny. Yes. All right. Yeah, I guess not too many people know about that about him now. That's really mm -hmm. funny. Yeah, that, that, those That's were his really those were his funny. roots. And then this other guy, D.A. West, who was like one of the best in the world at the time. Uh, and there were just like a bunch of good players from New York City in general. So I got like third, no, I got second place at a really big tournament uh, called Zenith in 2007, um, September, se September 2007, where I beat D.A. West. I got second to bum. But that was kind of my breakout, hmm. and from there, like I would also go on to do well at like the nationals that I, that I would go to, like uh, pound three. I got ninth place, which was like a, a really major tournament at the, at the time. Right. Hmm. So I started to put my name on the map like two years in. Hmm. That's cool. And uh, so then you were doing that with Captain Falcon, right? Yep. Which is pretty sick. Um, could you explain to those of us who may not be as familiar with melee why that's pretty sick? Basically, Captain Falcon's sick. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Basically. You heard it here. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Lower uh, the thirds, right there. The secret to Aziz's success is just be sick at the game. <laughs> be sick at a sick that's character. That's the TLDR. Cool. That's the TLDR. That's why this kid plays a uh, Twisted Fate too, right? <laughs> yeah. Hello. Wait. Okay. I, so, when did you start playing League? 2011. I got locked. Uh, do you remember there was like this hurricane that just like destroyed New York? Uh, Sandy? Sandy. No, I think it was Irene. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, I think. Was it? Yeah. I, I'm yeah, not yeah. sure. It was, like, uh, summer of 2011. Yeah, Sandy was 2013, I think, or 12. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it was, like, August 2011, and I was locked in my room with my best friend for, like, five days, and League of Legends, <laughs> League of Legends was kind of, like, you know, all the rage back then, so yeah. we had nothing better to do. Like, you know, we played, we were meleeed out. We needed something new. Yeah, yeah. So we downloaded League, and... That was the day of my life just went downhill. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No. See, no League player can ha can truthfully look you in the eye and be like, yeah, I installed League and I'm a better person now. No. Like, no, no that's no. not the answer you're supposed to say. You're supposed to say, okay, Jimmy. So uh, do you play a game called Overwatch? <laughs> I've never played Overwatch. I know hmm. very little. Okay. okay. What, pray tell, is the reason why you've maybe avoided Overwatch? Is it because perhaps it's not a very compelling and attractive game to play? It's an FPS, probably. Well, uh, Overwatch doesn't have a fox in it. Oh, so yeah, that'll... I, <laughs> do I would it. never waste my time with it. I don't blame you. No fox, no play. I get it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you, I see that there's, like, an aversion to... Not an aversion. I, you just haven't been playing FPS. Is there, like, a specific reason, like, that you got into League over, like, uh I like think League, CS? honestly, like, League was just at the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. Had it been Overwatch back then, I probably would have played Overwatch. Mm -hmm. um, but Overwatch wouldn't have existed back then. Yeah, because <laughs> League needs to die. It's 10 years old. No, I'm kidding. It's the better game. <laughs> I don't care what you say. That's fine. That's whatever. Um, yeah. No, I mean, so, okay. So, you've got, obviously, a a plethora. I hate using that word, but you've got a lot of uh, achievements in the video gaming world. And um, how do you do it? Like, what's the secret to be... Because like, I have people asking me, how do I get good without putting time in games? <laughs> oh, that's, Literally that's in that possible. voice. I, huh. Right? Yeah. Literally in that voice. It's not possible. How do you do it? So... I know it. Like, what skills transfer from TCG mm. to being good at TCG, from being good at Captain Falcon and Fox, to being good at Twisted Fate and League? Well, <laughs> it's a good question, I guess, because uh, I think the key thing, like the common denominator between being good at any game, is like to some degree you do need to like do things in the optimal way. Like every game's got like elements of chess in it, mm. like how uh, a chess computer will spit out the same move every time. I guess TCGs taught me this from an early age because TCGs teach you, like any TCG teaches you to minimize like the cards in your deck, um, like to really make the most out of every slot. Like you gotta ask yourself, why are you running this card right. when there could be something better to run? Right. And you could 
you got to think about expected value. Like, I could lose a game because I'm running this card. Yeah, like, percent chance I draw a card I just don't need at all. Yeah, exactly. And, like, there are cards that will win you games, but they won't win you games as much as another card mm -hmm, would have won mm -hmm. you the game. That's it. So, uh, I guess it got me thinking that way for, like, a long time. But this does kind of tie into every game. Ironically, out of all the games I've played, it ties into Melee the least. Hmm. Because as much as it ties into Melee, Melee is also kind of the most psychological game of any game that I know. So okay. it's got elements of like what I just said, but it's also got elements of things that defy like logic and calculations. So I think that's also what keeps it going. I think that's what keeps it timeless. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah. In addition to that, though, I think there is a huge amount of mechanical execution that you have to like know and master. Oh yeah. How how much time would you say that it how much time would you say you devoted to actual like physical mastering for melee as opposed to say league? Ironically, I think in these past like 6 7 years, I've played more league hours than melee just because league's more of a grind like to mm. get like you know a high rank in any of these like MOBAs or MMORPGs, you probably have to sit there playing for like ten hours a day. Like if you're one of like yeah. the top ranked players, yeah. uh, otherwise it's actually impossible to have like that much ELO. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but as far as melee, I really think that like all the best players at this point are well over five thousand hours or something. I don't I don't know. I mean, we most of us have been playing the game for over ten years. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to spit out like uh, inaccurate numbers, but yeah, I, I know people who have five thousand hours in league and they've been playing it for like three years, and it's like yeah, I can only imagine how much time you guys must have put into it. But that time into it must have its toll on your body as well, because we've seen people in Overwatch.